What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com back with another Blender 3.0 tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out the new asset browser and how you can use it to start storing your assets for Blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so to start off I've downloaded the diorama file that's available for Blender 3.0. You can download that on the Blender releases page. Um, if you scroll down to the asset browser section there's a link on this page, it says download this cube diorama blend file to play with the new asset browser. So this is an example file that Blender has made available so that we can practice using the new asset browser. And so if you look at this, when you open it up, what it has is it has a window open for your asset browser. And so for Blender, let's say that we were to create a normal layout scene like this. So just something like this, right? But um, if we wanted to open up the asset browser, we could just drag in a new window right here. And then now under the editor type, you can go over to asset browser in order to see your asset library. So you can open up the asset browser by doing that. Um, and so what we want to do is let's take a look at what's contained in here. So this asset browser file contains both materials as well as objects that you can drag into the scene in order to make changes to the way everything looks. So for example, let's say I wanted to add some furniture. I could just go into the object furniture section and I could just drag objects into this. So let's say for example, that we wanted to bring the desk in right here. So you can drag this and notice how this object comes in and it'll align with whatever surface you put it over and it'll give you a little white, um, it'll give you a little white grid in here showing you what it's going to be aligned with. But if I let up on this, it's going to place the desk inside of the scene. And so then I'm just going to take the desk and I'm just going to rotate it. I'm going to put it in place just like this. Then you can also bring in other things. So let's say, for example, I wanted to bring in like a short bench or something like that. I could just drag the bench in right here. And notice that it's bringing the assets in fully textured and ready to go. Um, so everything that was contained inside of these objects is being brought into your scene. And so then there's other things in here. Like, for example, I could add like picture frames to the walls like this just by dragging them in. Notice how they load quickly and easily. And so notice how there's not only objects in here, but there's also materials. So if I look at these materials, notice how there's options for different materials that I can drag into my scene. And I can drag these into my scene and notice how the materials are adjusting as I drag this in. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow us to really quickly apply different materials to our scenes, which is really exciting. It means you can set these up once, save them in your asset library, and then access them whenever. So this is a really powerful tool for being able to save and access things for Blender. And so now that we've taken a look at what's possible, let's jump over into a fresh file and let's take a look at how saving things to the asset library works. So I'm just gonna create a new Blender file right here. And I'm going to go ahead and not save. And let's go ahead and let's add an asset library. So I'm just going to click and drag over here like this. And we're going to add an asset browser. So now the asset browser is in here. Notice how currently the asset browser is empty. And so if you look at this, notice how you can see the assets that are currently available in this Blender session, or you can also access other files that you've saved on your computer. And so you can set that location by going to Edit, Preferences, under File Paths, that's gonna give you a location or an option where you can set the location where you can save your asset libraries. So. I've set this location right here. And basically that's just a folder where assets are going to be saved. And so for now, let's add some very simple assets to this scene. So I'm just gonna add some shapes in real quick. All right, so now I have four objects in my scene, right? I have Bonnie, the monkey, the teapot, and the gear. And let's say that I wanted to save these um, for access later. So we're going to go with these just because they're very simple. And so what we want to do is in order to save something for access later over in the asset browser, what you do is you just go find it in your scene collection. You right click and you click on the button for mark as asset. And so notice how when you mark it as an asset, it now shows up in your asset file over here. And so if, if I was to click and drag this, notice how she gets placed inside of my viewport. 
And so I'm going to delete this now. One thing we're going to want to look at in a second is the direction of the model origin because that's going to affect the way this is brought in. But let's say we wanted to add all of these as assets. Well, I'm just going to right click, I'm going to mark this as an asset, I'm going to mark this as an asset, and I'm going to mark this as an asset. So now we've got objects showing up in our scene right here. And notice how we get a preview of how those look inside of our scene as well. And so one thing to note about these is you can also select them and then tap the N key in order to get a window off to the right where you can add information about these. So for example, if I didn't want this to be called Suzanne, I could call it monkey and change the name right there. So you can change things like the description as well as things like the preview file. And so you can either have this set an automatic preview or you can also load in a custom preview image um, if you have something that you like better. And so those objects also have the materials that were associated with them when we save them. And so one thing I wanna point out about the material preview is best as I can tell, unless I'm doing something wrong, the preview is only going to update with materials if you apply something with like a texture file associated with it. And so let's say I was to apply like a wood material to this Suzanne, for example, and then go back into the current file. We'll talk about these other options a little bit later. But if I was to go into this file and look at the Suzanne option, notice how the preview is still kind of this gray scale. But if I click on the button to refresh like this, then it's gonna go through and it's gonna update this new um, material on it. And so if I was to jump this back over to a yellow material and then refresh this preview, notice how this shows up as grayscale. So just be aware that your previews in here are going to be driven by the materials that are placed on them. And so now, if I wanted to add them back to my scene, I can just drag them in like this. And notice how they retained the material information that they had when we saved them. So those objects all have the materials that were associated with them inside of the model. And so notice how my Bonnie model, when I added her to the scene, she comes in sideways. So the reason she comes in sideways is because my object axis is set up where the Z axis is pointing off to the side. So to fix that, um, first off, you can remove objects from the library by right clicking and clicking on clear asset or you can just come over here and right click and clear asset. Notice how that removes it from the current file. But what we wanna do is we want to affect her origin. So we're just going to rotate this on the X axis, negative 90 degrees like this. And then we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move this down as well. So what we're doing is we're affecting the model origin. The model origin is going to affect where the object is inserted. So this is gonna act as our base location for the object that's being inserted. So now I've got my origin set up the way that I would like. So I'm just gonna add her to my asset library again. So I'm just gonna right click and click on mark as asset. Now, if I drag her in, she's gonna come in standing up facing the proper direction. So things like that are gonna be important when you save things to your asset library. And so while we're on the subject of the object origins, note that those are also going to to affect the previews that are created in here. So for example, if I was to go to my Suzanne model right here, notice how right now that model is giving me a preview that's kind of a side view. However, if I was to go into my object origins and rotate that origin along the Z axis, so 90 degrees like this, so notice the green axis is facing forward. Notice how this is giving me a different preview than it was before. So you can set that rotation like this and then update the preview in order to change the preview direction of the way the object is facing. So that's basically gonna allow you to set the direction that those previews are being created. That's also going to set the direction that these objects are facing when you drag them into your model. Okay, and so let's say that we wanted to access these from an external or another file. Well, what we need to do in order to do that is these are currently just being saved inside of this blend file, right? They're being stored inside of this file. Basically, every object that's been marked as an asset is being stored in that file. But it's only being saved in this current file. Well, what we want to do, and I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these extra objects that are in here, is we want to take this and we want to do a file save as, and we want to save a copy of this inside of that folder that we set in the preferences. So if we do a file, Blender Assets, we want to save this as simple 
shapes dot blend and so we're just going to do a file save as and so what that's going to do is that's going to save that inside of the folder where we store our assets and so now if we go into this new file that we created we click the drop down we go to the justin's asset folder which is basically this folder right here and remember we set the label inside of our preferences right here but if we go into justin's assets right here see how everything that was saved inside of that folder is going to show up in here so i could bring that bonnie model in right here i could bring in the gear i could basically bring in all of the different objects that we saved in here so basically all we're doing is we're creating blender files with our objects inside of them and saving them in that folder and then this reads that and so we can also do this with materials so let's say, for example, that I wanted to be able to access like the materials and everything else that was created in that diorama file. Well, what I could do is I could move that diorama file into that assets folder like this. So if I paste this in there, the cube diorama blend file is now in the blender assets folder. And so now if I refresh this, Notice how it's going to read everything that's in that folder. So now you're seeing all the assets that are in the files in that folder in this giant list. All right, so one thing that you might have noticed about this is that when we brought these over, the categories that were contained inside of the diorama file aren't actually shown in here. And the reason why is we only drag the blend file over, but not the categories file. So if we look at that diorama folder, Right here, notice how it actually came with two different files. It came with the cube diorama and the blender assets file. Well, the blender assets file defines all of the different kinds of categories that are contained inside of the assets file. So if you look at this right here, notice how all of those different material categories that were created inside the blend file, which by the way, you can manage over here, didn't get brought in with that. So. If we were to take this category file right here and we're just going to copy it. So we're going to do an edit copy and we're going to paste that in right here. Notice how this is going to overwrite the category file that we already had in here, but that's fine because there's nothing in it yet. We're going to go ahead and replace this right here. So now the blender category file that's over here um, shows up in this list and that category file is going to get saved inside of your assets folder. But if we look at this now and we refresh this, notice how now all of those categories that were created in that original file are now contained in here. So we've got folders for materials and for objects. And let's say that we wanted to create a new category. So we're just gonna click in here. We're actually gonna click the plus button and we're just gonna name this something like lights right here. And so now let's say we were to add a light. So we're just gonna do a shift A We'll add a point light and we'll say it's 250 watts. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to mark it as an asset. All right, so we'll also add an area light. So it's like we're starting a uh, light library for our asset browser. So we've created two kinds of lights in here and we want to put them in a lights category. So we're just going to name this. We're just going to add we want to put this in a lights catalog. So we're just going to name this lights. We're just going to drag these into the lights catalog. We can get more in depth on organization later, but I'm just going to do a file save as I'm going to save this as a lights dot blend right here in that folder. Well, now if you were to create a new model and look at our asset browser, so we're going to go into my Justin's assets. And so now notice how we've got the materials catalog. We've got the lights catalog. So you can bring these in really quickly. So I could bring my 250 watt light in just like this or my area light from that library as well. So you can use this in order to create more in-depth catalogs and categories. Um, just remember that you are going to have to continue saving files into that folder. And then one other thing is let's say you wanted to save materials into your files. So um, like, let's say we wanted to save this blue material, right? Um, nothing special about it. 
We'll turn the roughness down so it's a little bit reflective. But let's say you wanted to save this material. Well, you would just jump into your material properties right here. And for the material, you can right click on it and you can mark that as an asset. And so notice how when you do that, that's gonna save that as an asset inside of your current file. So what that means is that means that now you can drag that out of your asset, asset library onto objects. So you can, you can use this in order to save all of your materials. And then we would just do the same thing. We just save the blend file um, so that we could access it from our overall assets folder. All right, so you can also save poses in here, which we'll talk about in a future video. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about this system. I know it starts off a little bit confusing. Once you figure out the way that it works, though, I think it's pretty easy to use. But again, leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. I'll link to some other 3.0 videos on this page as well. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.